Hi, I'm Molly McGuire. And I'm Sydney Reinhardt. And today we're going to be talking about how you can take your team decision making event to the next level. The first step in being super successful in Team Deca role plays is to make sure you find a partner that you're comfortable working with. Make sure it's somebody that you know outside of DECA so that when competition comes, there's no nervousness or awkwardness between you two and that you guys are ready to get some DECA glass. I know it's cliche to say that practice makes perfect, but it's cliche for a reason. And with team events, you can't just practice with performance indicators and case studies. You also have to practice with your partner. In team events, one of the most important things is that you and your partner can work well together and be a cohesive team. By practicing often together, you can make sure that you identify and utilize all of your strengths so that you can make your team the most successful it can be. Another way to be super successful in team events is to find a partner that complements your strengths and weaknesses. For example, my partner is really good at using business jargon and answering the performance indicators, while I excel more on the creative end of the role plays and making graphics and visuals. We work together very well and we complement each other's strengths and weaknesses. So when trying to find a partner, make a chart of your pros and weaknesses and find someone who can complement yours. The second step is to establish a process that you'll be able to use every single time you go into a prep session. One of the biggest tips that I can give you is don't listen to exactly what people tell you you should be doing. And I know that sounds a little weird, but your process is not going to be the same as another team's process because you have to do what works for your team, and that's most likely not going to be what works for another team. I definitely recommend using the processes that have worked for other people and using that as kind of a template, but finding your own balance and what works for you and your partner is the most important thing. That being said, I'll tell you what my partner and I do because it works for us and maybe it can help you find a process that works for you and your partner. We spend the first five minutes reading, so one of us reads the performance indicators while the other reads the case study, and then we switch so that we can both read all of the material. Then we spend the next 10 to 15 minutes comparing any notes that we may have written down while we were reading, any ideas we came up with, and then we discuss and try to come up with one cohesive plan. After we have a set plan, we spend the next 10 to 15 minutes talking about how we can smoothly integrate the performance indicators into each of the points we were going to make. We also make a brief outline of the script, so we make sure we hit all of our key talking points, and to make sure we're not super repetitive, and that we know which part each of us is going to be talking about. Then for the final five minutes, we'll start making our graphics and agenda. Even if 25 minutes in, we haven't finished our script outline, we'll always spend five minutes on graphics because they're so, so important, and we'll talk about that later. Something that we like to do if we have extra time is just to run through the whole presentation really quickly. And if there's something that one of us says that we really like, we'll say, hey, that's really good, say that in front of the judge. And if there's something that's not as great, we'll tell each other how to fix it or maybe just scrap it completely. That can be really helpful because you're getting feedback beforehand so that when you go in front of the judge, you're putting your best foot forward. Okay, so here's something that's kind of small, might not seem super important, but it's something that's really helped my partner and I. We like to decide ahead of time who's going to answer a question first, because that way there's not an awkward pause where you're trying to figure out who's going to talk, but you're also not overlapping and trying to talk over each other. So we just say, you know, I'm going to answer the first question, you answer the second question, and that doesn't mean we can't add on to each other's questions, or if I don't really know what's going on and I can just defer the question to her, but that way it helps set up a little bit of a structure so that you don't have that awkward moment in front of the judge. Another thing to keep in mind is that you can totally change your process over time. There's no right or wrong for your team. So over time, after you've done some more practice role plays, take into consideration what went well and what didn't go so well, and make some changes to your process to overall perform better. When it's game time, you have to hype you and your partner up. This is the best way to get into a great mindset and perform super well. Make sure to compliment your partner before you go out and make sure that you guys just have some positive energy because this will translate very well to the judges and this will make you feel better and perform better. So after you take a minute to hype each other up, it's also pretty important to take a second and chill out because role plays can be stressful. They are for me. And I know that my partner and I, we always just kind of try to laugh for like 30 seconds before we walk in front of our judge. And we don't set aside 30 seconds, <laughs> but we'll just laugh at each other or at ourselves and something funny that happened earlier in the conference. And that just helps then when you walk in front of the judge, you don't have like those nerves and you're not jittery and your hands aren't shaking and you just feel more calm. And like I was saying earlier, what works for me might not work for you. So maybe laughter doesn't do it. Maybe that stresses you out even more. So just take a deep breath or just tell each other, you know, you got this. I believe in you. Like, I trust you. We got this. Um, back, you know, back to hyping each other up. So do what works for you. Just try to calm yourself down a little bit. Shake off those nerves. 
And last tip is choose graphics. These are super important because they can help you stand out to a judge and they can keep you on track. So some good examples of this are spot analysis chart, bar graphs, pie charts, anything like that. You name it, you can probably use it. Business cards and an agenda is a really big one. So something that's really cool about the agenda is that not only can it be something that you can hand to the judge, but it's also kind of a template for how you want your script to go. So if you want to talk about a key talking point, just put it on the agenda. The judge will be able to look at it, you'll be able to look at it, you'll have a cheat sheet right in front of you and they won't even know it. We hope these tips helped you. They've been things that we've been told from other people and that we've picked up through our years competing in team events, so we hope that we can spread our knowledge to you guys. So we'll put both of our Instagrams right here over on the side. So if you want to talk, we both love talking about DECA, so we'd be super happy to answer any questions.